Okay guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be continuing my series where I break down the seasonal patterns of bass fishing. And in my last video, I explained that fishermen break down a year into the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And then they further subdivide these seasons into shorter seasons. And the fish will act differently in these seasons and relate to different structures, different covers, and different parts of the lake. And in my last video, I looked at the pre-spawn and showed you a bunch of really good spots you can fish in the pre-spawn. And this time around, we're gonna be looking at the spawn. So if you saw my last video on the pre-spawn, then you'll remember my explanation of how bass migrate from their main lake, winter areas, to their spring spawning areas. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out using the link in the top right corner here. But just for a quick recap, bass will normally move from their main lake areas to staging areas like secondary points and ditches in the mouths of pockets, and then they'll move up to their spawning areas once water temperatures hit 60 degrees. Now here's just a breakdown of the spring season and I give you an idea of what the pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn look like in terms of water temperature and areas of the lake to fish. And these are just guidelines, they're not hard rules. And I've seen fish spawn in 55 degree water and 75 degree water. And I've also seen them spawn out in the main lake and halfway back in the creeks. So these aren't hard fast rules again, but they're a good guideline and they'll probably cover 80% of the cases you'll see on the lake. Now, some of y'all may have heard people say that the bass were spawning and that they were on their beds, but you might not know what these terms mean. So, spawning is basically when two fish are reproducing and they're laying their eggs, and beds are basically where the fish lay their eggs. And normally these beds are going to be in shallow water, so if the water's clear, you can actually see these fish, and so people will sight fish for them, and actually cast to the fish that are sitting on their beds and they'll see the fish down there. And you can also catch these fish by blind flipping or just flipping down the bank in the shallow cover and catch spawning bass that way too. Okay, so we know that these fish are gonna be on spawning flats and they're gonna be around shallow cover and making their beds, but where are they actually going to be on a lake? And so let's say that you were presented with this lake right here, Santee Cooper, where would you start fishing and what types of areas would you look for to find spawning bass? Well, normally there are three key features of good spawning areas. First is clear water, the second is hard bottom, and the third is that the areas are protected from the wind or the current. And all three of these features make it easier for the bass to spawn, but they're gonna look different depending on the type of lake you're fishing. So let's talk about some examples so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So first up, let's look at one of these good spawning areas on Santee Cooper that has all of these key features. So first up, this little pocket here has clear water, and you can tell that because the water is a lot darker in this pocket than it is out in the main lake, which looks really muddy and dirty, and the water in these spawning areas doesn't have to be that much clearer than the main lake, just a little bit. And second, this area has hard bottom in the form of grass. And even though the lot of the bottom here at Santee Cooper is really silty and muddy, the base of any grass or lily pads or any kind of vegetation is going to have harder bottom than anywhere else around there. And the bass will have to spawn at the base of that grass. And finally, if you look at the top here, there's a narrow entrance that protects this pocket from the wind. And there's no way that the wind from the main lake can get into this pocket. And so that keeps the water clear as well. And also keeps it warm because it's not getting affected by that wind and cold breeze. So we know that area is good, but let's take a look at another one just so you guys get a few more examples. So here's another little pocket that, again, has some clear water relative to the water on the main lake. It's protected from the wind because it just has that little narrow entrance, and it has a lot of lily pads in this little bay, and that creates hard bottom. And this is an area that's really similar to the area where Preston Clark set the BASS record for four days of fishing with 115 pounds on Santee Cooper. And he was just fishing the base of these lily pads with a Texas rig and catching some giant spawning largemouth. And that record was broken by Paul Elias later on, but still 115 pounds of bass in over four days, that's 20 bass, that's a huge limit. So these type of areas are really good and they hold a lot of big fish during the spawn. Okay, so those are some good spawning areas on Santee Cooper, but the lakes in your area might not set up like this one. So what I want to do now is give you some examples of spawning areas on different types of lakes. So hopefully you can apply what I'm talking about to your home lake. So first up, let's take a look at a deep clear lake, like Beaver Lake in Northwest Arkansas. And here's just an image of some of the major creeks on Beaver Lake. And if you were seeing this image, it might be kind of daunting to figure out where to start fishing because there's so many pockets and so much shoreline to fish. So let's start by eliminating some pockets that probably aren't good candidates for spawning areas. So let's start out here on the main lake and see if there's any pockets that meet the key features we talked about earlier. 
and fortunately here on Beaver Lake, the water is pretty much clear everywhere except for on the very top end of the lake, and there's hard bottom all over the place. So the first two criteria are pretty much met right away, but the third, being protected from the wind, can be a problem here on the main lake. So let's start off by looking at this pocket right here. And at first glance, it looks like a pretty good pocket. It's got some shallow water. The water on this end of the lake is really clear. And there's some hard bottom down there created by some rocks. And so it looks like it meets pretty much all the criteria. But if we look at all the different wind directions that could affect this pocket, it turns into a different story. So if we simulate the wind using these blue lines, you can see that any wind from the south, southwest, or southeast is going to be pushing directly into this pocket. And that's going to create a lot of waves that will stir up the shore and muddy up the water in these pockets, which is what we don't want this time of year. And fish will still spawn in these pockets, but they're just not going to be as many fish spawning in there as there will be in other areas we're going to look at. So I would stay away from these areas unless it's a last resort. Here's another main lake pocket that looks a little bit better, but if we bring in that wind again, you can see that any wind from the east is pretty much gonna be blowing right in that pocket, and we're gonna have the same issue. And so, again, even though fish might spawn in there, there's better pockets to focus on, and when I'm fishing, I like to find the high percentage areas where I'm gonna try to find the most fish. And so, I'm gonna skip over these type of pockets while I'm fishing, and try to find those prime spots for spawning bass. So what does a prime spawning spot look like on Beaver Lake? Well, if we move back in this creek a little bit, I'll show you some pockets where I've caught some good spawning bass in the spring here. And if you look at this creek, you can see that normally an east wind is going to blow some waves and some current up into these pockets. But there's actually three pockets here that are kind of protected from that east wind because they're pointed north and south. And these three pockets here normally have really good fish in them because they're not affected by that wind or the waves. And they're going to stay clean, they warm up a little bit quicker because they're pretty shallow in the back, and they are normally just hold some really good fish. And so these are the type of areas I'm going to be looking for on clear water lakes, especially here in northwest Arkansas. And just for another example, here's another creek I've caught some fish in before. And as you can see, this creek is affected by that north wind. And north wind is going to blow current straight down that creek and is going to wash up waves on all the shores in here. But there's actually this little creek that shoots off to the side and points to the west. And this pocket isn't affected by the wind and it's going to stay warm and it's going to stay clear. And this pocket is where I normally catch some good fish on beaver. So that was a deep clear lake, and now let's take a look at some shallow muddy bodies of water. First up, let's take a look at the Arkansas River, and the Arkansas River and other river systems present their own challenge during the spawn because they're going to have current pushing through them year-round, and that's going to stir up the water, make it muddier, and again, fish don't like to get in that current in the spawn, and so normally these fish are going to push back into backwater areas, like this one right here. And this backwater is going to have clear water because that water is not kicked up by the current and it's protected from the current. And it's also a lot of times going to have some hard bottom back there. And in this case, there's actually a riprap wall in this backwater. And those fish like to spawn in those rocks. And again, that water is a little bit clearer back in there. It has a hard bottom and it's protected from the current. And so it's just a perfect place for these bass to spawn. And here's another example of a shallow, muddy body of water, and this is Lake Dardanelle in Arkansas. And as you can see, the main lake here is a lot dirtier than back in this backwater. And if we zoom in into this backwater, you can see that these little pockets and sloughs are a little bit clearer, they are protected from that current, and they have some vegetation down there that those fish like to spawn around. And also, if you look at one of these sloughs, you can see that some of them have a little bit deeper water than others. And normally these are going to hold more fish because in the spawn, normally you'll get a lot of cold fronts during the spring and April. And those fish like the ability to pull off into deeper water when that water cools down or when there's a cold front. And they'll pull off at night into those creek channels and then they'll move back up in the afternoon to spawn and lay their eggs. So if you can find spawning areas close to deep water or with a little channel running into the area, you're normally going to find more fish. And finally, let's look at some grassy lakes. And first up, we're going to be looking at Lake Maumelle in Arkansas. So here's one of my favorite spawning areas on Lake Maumelle. And first off, you can see that there's a big island that protects this northern shore from any wind off the main lake. And normally, banks behind islands produce really good fish for me during the spawn. And then if we zoom in, you can see that the shoreline has some buck brush up on the bank and then some grass off the bank. And this gives the fish multiple options on where to spawn. 
And the water level on Lake Maumel normally fluctuates a lot in the winter time because it'll draw it down to winter pool. And depending on how much rain you get in the spring, the water might not make it all the way up to the shore. And when this happens, there's normally a lot of fish that set up on the inside grass line here. And inside grass lines are basically the area between the grass and the shoreline. And these fish will actually spawn right on that inside edge right here. And you'll be able to catch a lot of good fish that are kind of sitting up right in that grass or on the edge of that grass. And then when the water is really high and it's up in those bushes, those bass like to spawn up in the bushes and in and around them. So depending on what the water level does, it will change where these fish will spawn on these grass lakes. And for another example of a grassy lake, let's take a look at Lake Cayuga up in New York. The elites have fished here a couple times and it has a lot of grass in it. And if we zoom in here, we can see a big spawning flat. And this flat has grass scattered out all over it. And a spawning flat is basically a really wide area that's all the same depth. So this whole area is pretty much two to five feet deep. And it can be really daunting to try to figure out where the fish are on a huge flat like this because it all looks the same and there's just grass everywhere. So let's try to look at this flat and pick out some high percentage areas where we can find these fish. Okay, so we zoomed in here and normally when I'm looking at these flats, one of the first things I'm gonna look for are high spots. And if you take a look at Navionics here, you can see that there's a couple areas I've highlighted that are four feet deep and they're surrounded by five and six feet of water. And these high spots are normally gonna have harder bottom than the surrounding area. And there's normally gonna be like rocks and boulders down there. And if we put the grass in here, you can see that a lot of times these high spots will actually have no grass in them at all. They'll be clear spots. And the fish love to spawn in these clear spots and in these high spots that have that hard bottom. And so if you're struggling to find fish on these big flats, go on to Navionics and look for these little tiny high spots or these small contour changes and you're going to find some fish. And here's just another example of a high spot off this flat. And this one's even a little bit more obvious. And normally when you see this big of an elevation change on a flat, it's normally going to be a rock pile or some sort of really hard bottom. And so this is definitely a spot I would check out. And it's going to be a high percentage spot on this flat to find spawning bass. Well guys, that's it. I've covered a ton of information in this video, but hopefully you learned something about how bass behave during the spawn and maybe got some good examples that you can apply on your home lake to find more spawning bass next spring. So either way, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit like and subscribe down below and leave a comment if you have any questions. I know I covered a lot and I may have missed a few things, so just let me know. And if you enjoyed the video and you think maybe one of your friends would like it, share it out with them. I really appreciate it and it would help grow the channel and help me make more content like this. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.